there's there's a there's a um a story in the Bible, and I hate to call it a story, but it's it's you know just uh, there's a there's a narrative in the Bible where um, David actually goes and 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 recaptures the Ark of the Covenant, which had been captured by the Philistines in a previous battle, right? So David recently becomes king. The Ark of the Covenant during his you know initial time as king was was not in Israel. And the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God amongst uh, the people of Israel. And uh, so he went to go get it back. And when they were bringing it back, one of the men that were with him, this is in, by the way, if you want to read the story, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 6. One of the men, because the Ark of the Covenant was being pulled on a cart by two oxen, and as the uh, cart was being pulled, the oxen stumbled and the Ark of the Covenant began to fall. And this one of David's men he reached out his hand to touch the Ark of the Covenant to stop it from falling. So he, this was a very natural and instinctive thing to do. Seemed like a very innocent thing to do. You don't want the Ark of the Covenant to fall. But when he did that, the Bible says that God killed him because of his irreverent act. Now, this may seem harsh. And on first glance, you might say, man, that's kind of that's kind of hardcore. All the guy was trying to do was help and God killed him. Like, what's that about? Um, but there's more to the story than that, and you have to understand the the in the total context. You see, the reason why the Ark of the Covenant had been captured in the first place is because a failure of leadership. Eli, who was the priest in Israel and kind of considered the spiritual leader at the time, this was before Israel had any kings. This was before Saul was anointed king. Uh he was the priest in Israel, and by all accounts, he was a good man, but he had two wicked sons named Hophni and Phinehas. And Eli knew that Hophni and Phinehas were doing evil, and they were taking bribes, and they were sexually immoral and, and all the things. But he didn't do anything about it, and God was angry with Eli because of that. And because of that, uh, and, I, and I, you know, kind of the general kind of posture in Israel was one of kind of lax standards it appeared at the time, and uh, but Eli was kind of uh, emblematic of that. Uh, and so God said, I'm going to judge Eli and his his household, and he t actually told Samuel that, uh, who, who kind of was the successor to Eli. But he also kind of judged Israel because Israel ended up getting into this battle with the Philistines, and like 30,000 men were lost, and they captured the Ark of the Covenant. And that's so that's how it happened. So it was a failure of leadership in the first place by Eli. Now, fast forward from the time that happened uh, to when David became king. So this was after Saul's reign and kind of David's taking over. And that's when David found himself uh, uh, recapturing the ark. But there's something interesting that happened when the Philistines captured the ark. Uh, this is a stick with me here. This is going to be well worth it. Uh, the payoff here. When the Philistines captured the ark, God started to plague them. He started to plague the Philistines because they're like, he's like, I'm the God of Israel. I'm not your God. I'm judging them. But that doesn't mean that I rock with you basically. <laughs> so they, these, he struck these people with pestilence and, and tumors and, and, uh, some of them died. And so they didn't want the ark of the covenant anymore. They had captured it, but they said, you know, this, this thing that's kind of representative of Israel's God, we don't want it anymore. We, it's 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 got bad vibes, right? It's bringing bad things upon us, and so they wanted to send it back to the Jews. They wanted to send it back to to, to Israel, but they didn't want to take it because having it in the first place is what was causing them all these these problems. So what they did was they took the Ark of the Covenant and they put it on a cart, and they had two oxen pull it. But they didn't. They basically just said, "Hey." This is how we'll know if, if the God of Israel is really doing all of this to us. We'll just, you know, set the cart. And if the oxen goes toward, you know, Israel or Jerusalem or whatever, then we'll know that uh, that this was the Lord. But if it goes in the other direction, then we know that this just happened to us by chance. And sure enough, it went uh, it went the, the other way. And it went to um, Obed-Edom's house where it stayed. And then God blessed Obed-Edom uh, for, for some time. Now, 
Here's the interesting thing. Here's the tie-in. See, the Philistines did not know who the God of Israel was. They didn't understand his ways. They didn't understand that he was holy. And so the fact that they put it, put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart, kind of pulled by two oxen, they also did something weird where they took some golden tumors and golden rats because those are the two, two of the things that uh, God afflicted them with where the, when the Ark was with them, they fashioned some tumors and some rats out of gold and they put it in the thing with the Ark and they sent it away as an offering. You know, think about that. Tumors and rats. Really weird. This is this is kind of kind of indicative of the fact that uh, people who are who do not know the ways of God, they don't even know how to honor him. They don't know how to deal with God. And they certainly don't know what the rules are for transporting the Ark of the Covenant. But God has specific rules, and it certainly wasn't that you would put it on a cart, uh, uh, basically transported and and pulled by a couple of beasts. The way that Israel was instructed to carry the Ark of the Covenant was to carry it, uh, the men were to carry it, they were to carry it on their shoulders so that the Ark was above their head in reverence to God. It certainly wouldn't be right for them to put it on a cart carried by two beasts. Now remember that, because when David recovered the Ark of the Covenant, that's exactly what they were doing. They decided that they would move it from Obed-Edom to Jerusalem, but they put the ark on a cart. They put it on a new cart because it was on a cart when it arrived from the other uh, two beasts, and then they had the oxen towed it. Well, they should have known better because they know that that, there's no way that the Philistines would have known that, but the people of Israel, the people of God, should have known better to reverence God and to honor God it, it, there's no no excuse for them not to do it, even though the Philistines, that was just what they did because they were ignorant. And so the real takeaway is this. When the church tries to do things that the world does and the church tries to be like the world, they, then you are culpable because we know better even though they don't, right? And the thing about a lot of these things that Megan has uncovered in this book is that what we have is the church emulating the world, the church wanting the approval of the world, the church doing things that the world is doing. So if you think about everything that Megan is putting her finger on in the book, it's that from COVID-19 to CRT to Black Lives Matter to uh, 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 you know climate change activism, what, what we're doing is that the, the world, the wicked, which the Bible says the wicked do not understand justice, but the righteous understand it perfectly. The wicked is setting, setting the tone. They're setting the tenor. They are determining the overall direction of what is considered good and right and justice. And then we try to take that, right? And then we try to stuff those, those upside down ideas, those ideas from the world, and we try to Christianize them and we try to do it in the church, like what the world is doing, just like the children of Israel who uh, tried to copy the methods of transporting the Ark of the Covenant that they got from the heathen, from the Philistines, which was wrong and which they should have known better. So now they try to basically make that their method of transporting the Ark of the, Ark of the Covenant, which God expressly forbid them not to do. So when you understand that concept, and when you understand that context, God didn't kill one of David's men because he was just trying to be helpful and reached out his hand to stop the Ark of the Covenant from falling. He killed him because they shouldn't have had the Ark on the, of the Covenant on a cart in the first place. And the only reason why he had to reach out his hand to grab it because the oxen stumbled is because they weren't sanctifying God in their hearts in the first place. And that was the problem. And so how does this relate to people like Gavin Ortland and other people in the body of Christ who seem to always be in a posture where they end up getting duped by these left-wing progressive ideas? And then they say, 
oh well, you know, we're just trying to we're just trying to be helpful. We're just trying to enter. We're just trying to have a conversation. That's always there. They're always kind of like, well, oh, you know, I, you know, I did, you know, just like there again with the COVID nineteen propaganda and the nonsense. And then once everything that the so called conspiracy theory said was true, and everything that a lot of churches who were resisting the tyranny of the state by saying no, we are going to gather and meet in our in our churches in person. And they were saying, no, we're not going to be forced to take this experimental vaccine. And all of these other people in Big Eva that were saying, well, if you love your neighbor, you'll get the vaccine. And if you love your neighbor, you'll wear a mask and you won't go gather in church because, you know, you'll spread the you'll be killing grandmas in the church service. Uh, when it came out that all of those people were right, then what did the people say? What did the Big Eva say? Oh, my bad. Sorry, I was just trying to help. Right. And just like people think that the guy who stretched out his hand to stop the Ark of the Covenant from falling, that God should have took it easy on him because, oh, he was just trying to help. No, that's a bunch of nonsense. The reason why Big Eva and people like Gavin Ortland and the rest of them, the reason why they keep getting duped is because they care too much about what the world thinks. That is the through line with this whole book. And I'm not finished reading it. I'm there again. I'm at chapter six, but um, these are very well researched chapters. And that is the problem. Gavin Orland, this is why I say he got off easy. He got off easy. It, 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 because he is plenty culpable. Because the posture of the heart, that's the reason why they keep getting taken to the cleaners, but they keep getting duped by things like CRT and COVID-19 and, and uh, you know, climate change and insert whatever left-wing progressive ideas. They keep getting sucked into this because they want the approval and to be seen as, you know, reasonable by people who hate our God. And that's the problem. So that is my brief assessment, my not so brief assessment, my way too long assessment of the situation between Megan Basham and Gavin Ortland, and what I say to him is what I say to the rest of them, hold that L because you're not blameless. But I'd like to know what you think. Uh, do you think that Gavin Ortland has a point? Um, do you think that uh, Megan Basham is, uh, is doing God, God's work? I certainly think she does, but let me know in the comments. And until uh, next time, my friends, God bless you.